Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, October 2nd, 2020. Uh, the COVID update tonight, first statistics, Oklahoma about 1,200 new cases yesterday October on October 1st. Uh, we're up to about 1,044 deaths. The trend is a rising trend a little bit in Oklahoma. Likewise, if you look at Illinois, uh, trend up, New York, California, Texas, Florida, Wisconsin still is having a huge increase every day of over 2,000 to 2,700. Um, so, Individual states are having pickups. If you look at the State of the Union, we're, I think we're about 37,000 cases three days ago, then about 40,000 cases two days ago, and then yesterday we were at 47,000. So we may be getting that March surge, which is a lot like what happened with Spanish flu, but it's too early to tell. We also know that we're not recording tons and tons of college-age kids who are just not getting tested while they're at school. Um, that's very clear. But likewise, they're not getting that sick, which also illustrates that um, schools can open, schools can open. So it's, you know, uh, interesting and complex time statistically. Trump has the virus, um, a little bit symptomatic. Melania has the virus. So what's Trump doing? Well, his doctor put out a memo to everyone and he's on, guess, guess what? Zinc, vitamin D, melatonin and then a uh, acid blocker. And that's what they, they're saying. No, this is what he's doing. I think it was a multivitamin too, exactly what we're talking about because that's what balances your immune system if you get sick with COVID. So if the president's doing it, even though Fauci and, oh, and red wine and all of them ignore it, there there's a reason to do that stuff. It's what the data shows. I would bet a quarter Two, that he's on hydroxychloroquine again, but they're at least at this point not going to promote that because they know that they'll just get so much inappropriate grief from the media against it. Uh, they're not going to say he's on it. Likewise, he's probably going to do outpatient steroids pretty quickly if he starts getting uh, a little more ill and he'll be on an antibiotic that will cover mycoplasm and ureaplasm walking pneumonia, which will either be doxycycline or Zithromax very quickly if he turns a hair because that's what you do to prevent people from getting sick so whether or not you believe that or don't believe that that's what they're going to do for the president and that's what we do for our patients because that's how you avoid people from getting super ill and having them die uh, so that's because you don't want them to get that sick so that's really the main things going on right now i think the pathophys of the virus really again falls into a few categories you get First, you get pneumonia along with asthma type stuff in your lungs at the same time. That's based on your ACE2 receptor site activity. Uh, then you scale up and you get sicker based then secondarily on what's your alpha interferon level and your, your, inter, your interferon type ones, which can get down regulated if you don't have or don't mount a response if you don't have zinc and you don't have vitamin D and you're, and you're nutritionally poor. So it all gets into this little bubble of very straightforward stuff. And then if you end up in the hospital, they're gonna give you convalescent plasma, remdesivir, which has a mild effect. Um, they'll switch to your steroids to an IV version. Uh, they will not be, most places won't give you hydroxychloroquine because it's too controversial now and everybody's just worn down on it. So they'll do the best they can to help you. But again, the convalescent plasma, why does it help and have the trend of working? Because it has a neutralizing antibody in it. That neutralizing antibody that they're using to treat active patients, obviously, since it still exists in the patients who were infected, means they're immune. And that's just a central concept we have to recognize, know, and understand every day. Um, now, on a separate su subject, Operation Warp, Warp Speed, the huge vaccine effort that's being led by uh, Dr. Deborah Mesoner from the CDC. She deserves a lot of credit because she's the one who said, no, don't let the Diamond Princess patients come over to the United States who are infected, we're not prepared, we're not ready, we're not set up. She got overruled by the State Department. And then she was the one who really led the public cry that said, oh no, COVID's a big deal, we gotta shut the country down, which then caused the stock market to plunge and then everybody got mad at her. But the bottom line is, she's in charge of Operation Warp Speed and she's probably the only person at the CDC who has any, who's senior who has any credibility left. And so, cause she stood up to, all the special interests in the government and was the person who was willing to 
let the public know and knew that President Trump was going to be a little frustrated with that. And so she's leading Operation Warp Speed along with the military because of logistics. And it's a pretty impressive group of people. It's very complex, but that data is starting to come out about what they're doing. And I can, from what I'm reading, it looks good in terms of effort, uh, professionalism, and logistics. We have to see if the vaccines are safe. But in terms of being able to get them out, getting them studied first, and getting the logistics set, it's definitely in process. I'm, I, I've been pretty impressed with everything I've read about it over the last few days. So that's a positive. I'm, I'm very happy about that. And that will continue irrespective of whether Trump stays in office or continues to be in office or Biden. There's a whole infrastructure that actually should exist to protect us that's been put in place and is actually working so far. So that's a positive thing that the, there's some good data on getting organized with a vaccine if there's a safe one that comes out. So that's the summary tonight. Um, Trump has COVID, Z he's on zinc, he's on a multi, he's on vitamin D, and he's on melatonin. You've heard it all before. There's a reason he's on it. There's a reason I want you on it. So good night. I'll give a little further, more complex update on immunology later in the weekend. And we're also going to talk about flu in high-risk patients and flu in children or the vaccine and whether people should do it or not do it. And it's always up to you. I'm just giving science and you get to make your own decision and talk to your doctors or providers. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.